ओके लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो टुडे द टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज क्वाजाइन न्यूटन मेथड we had discussed what exactly the quasi newtons method is trying to do so we know that the second derivative inverse is an important matrix uh, in order to speed up the convergence uh, newtons method is uh, the fastest method well not the fastest but like we talked about you know how you can create faster methods than newtons method but it requires higher order derivatives and so on not quite easy to uh, do it in the matrix case so quasi newtons uh, sorry newtons method is what we know is a faster method than steepest descent and any of the other methods that we have talked about so far so we want to mimic the entire process of newtons method without really uh, going through the computational overhead of applying the newtons method so here is the idea i want to minimize f of x x is in rn so newton's method says xk plus 1 equals to xk minus alpha k second derivative inverse gradient of fxk so this is my descent direction dk with a negative sign so dk contains the negative sign as well so it's xk plus alpha k dk and i don't want to compute this because computing this means that not only i have to compute the second derivative so there is n cross n minus 1 over 2 or n cross n uh, n times n plus 1 over 2 matrix entries that you need to compute derivatives you need to compute you also have to then take the inverse of that matrix uh, the positive definite matrix so that creates a bit of a challenge so i don't want to incur that much effort so i want to uh, come up with the following thing i want xk plus 1 equals to xk minus alpha k dk gradient of fxk where dk is some approximation of the second derivative inverse i want dk to be some approximation of second derivative inverse more importantly i want dk to be we i want to be able to compute dk starting with any d0 i want to be able to compute dk iteratively using the information i already have by doing some sort of matrix manipulation some matrix multiplication some ratio all of that is fine all of that is doable but i don't want to compute the inverse directly of the matrix so here is the idea in quasi newtons method so i'll tell you the philosophy first so let's talk about philosophy of this method so i have gradient of fxk plus 1 minus gradient of fxk i need to compute this i need to compute this and what do i get this is approximately equal to second derivative at xk plus 1 xk plus 1 minus xk <coughs> let's give it a name qk this is my approximately equal to dk plus 1 inverse and i'm going to give it a name pk <coughs> any question so far
where's the uh, approximate equality come from? No, uh, th that's what we are trying to do here, right? We want dk to be approximately equal to the second derivative inverse. So this is approximately second derivative. This is approximately dk plus 1 inverse. I want that approximation. So like why is the left-hand side approximately <coughs> the right-hand side, I mean, from the bottom point? Oh, because uh, remember from the Taylor series, this point has to be somewhere between xk plus 1 and xk. Okay. It's not exact. Okay, but we are assuming smooth function, continuous derivatives, continuous second derivatives, and all that. And I also know that xk plus 1 and xk are close to each other. It's not too far apart. So that's why this approximation is kind of valid. Why is that the derivative at x of k plus 1? Why not at x of k? Uh, you can pick x of k, but there is a specific reason, because we want to get the update for dk plus 1 in terms of pk and qk. So pk and qk is something I'm already computing. And I want to get this inverse, so that's why I've used xk plus 1 here. If I use xk, then I'm, I mean, this is not useful, right? Because I'm not computing, when I'm computing dk, I'm not really computing gradient of fxk plus 1, right? So it's just an approximation. Remember, this is an approximation. So I can pick xk, I can pick xk plus 1, and I can pick any of the term in between xk and xk plus 1, somewhere on that line. I can pick anything. So this comes from Taylor series, or rather Taylor series approximation. Any other question? So the thing to note is, these are the terms I'm computing anyways, right, uh, during the process of running my steepest descent or any other gradient descent algorithm. And I want to come up with this approximation. OK. <coughs> so here is the idea, the first idea, which is DFP method. Let's try to approximate dk plus 1. So the DFP method uh, says, which was the first quasi-Newton's method, is let's try to come up with a, add a rank 2 matrix. So this has to be positive definite. This is a semi-definite matrix. This has to be a positive real number. And this is a <coughs> semi-definite matrix. So I start with a, <coughs> I start with a, a positive definite matrix. That is what I was talking about. That's the DFP method. So in DFP method, I'm going to add two rank one matrices to dk in order to get dk plus one. <coughs> now if I pick my ak1 which is strictly positive or ak2 which is strictly positive, then I start with a positive definite matrix. matrix. I add two positive semi-definite matrices. I get a positive definite matrix, right? That's easy to understand. It turns out that it's very difficult to ensure that these terms will be strictly positive. AK1 and AK2 would be strictly positive. So they came up with some variation of this uh, idea that it's, maybe it's okay to have a negative uh, semi-definite matrix here, uh, as long as this overall matrix is positive definite. So eventually, we want dk plus 1 to be positive definite. So they said, I'm going to remove this requirement. And hopefully, I can prove that dk plus dk is positive definite. By picking an appropriate ak1 and ak2, I can make sure that dk plus 1 is positive definite. OK, so that's DFP method. Why was DK necessarily positive definite? Uh, why is DK necessarily? Because that's how you pick positive. Like, at the first instance, D0 has to be positive definite. 
And then you want D1 to be positive definite by picking an appropriate okay. values. So you start with an initialize. Yeah, so you initialize with a positive definite and you want to make sure that it remains within the positive definite domain for the rest of the algorithm. So AKY is a rank one matrix? Yeah. Okay, so AK, all the matrix are rank one matrix. Right, okay. right. So all the additions that I'm doing is rank one matrix. The only problem is these multipliers could be positive or negative. If it was positive, my life would be very easy. I don't have to prove anything here. Turns out that that's not the case in actual method. So the second one is BFGS method, which basically said, said that let's, instead of trying to do this, uh, instead of trying to approximate DK, let's try to approximate the second derivative it itself. I shouldn't say second, well, let me not put second derivative. Let me put it this way. DK plus one inverse, DK inverse plus the same thing. AK1, ZK, ZK transpose, AK2, ZK2, ZK2 transpose. So instead of updating dk, uh, this method said, okay, let's, let's not update dk, let's update dk plus one inverse. And then I'm going to, going to get dk by inverting this particular matrix. So the goal now is to find out what these matrices should be and the goal should be to find out what these variables should be, okay, for each of these. And then the book basically comes up with a rank three update, which is a generalization of these two methods. So these two methods are extreme methods, and then they came up with a generalization of this, where dk plus one equals to dk plus rank three matrix. which is a generalization of these two methods. <coughs> Questions now? Yes. I thought they were both rank one matrices. Uh, rank one is what we will do in the class, but the actual algorithm is rank two. So yesterday what I had said was, we'll do the rank one update. Uh, we'll do it by hand and we'll see where the algorithm might break down. And then they've done rank two update here and then some other method came up which does rank two update. And in the book they generalized it to rank three updates. But the whole point is, we only need PK, QK and DK in order to compute DK plus one. So, and these three things are something we already have, and we only have to do some matrix multiplication to get that. Is a a scalar? Yes? Is a a scalar here? AK is a scalar, yeah. Okay, and the rest of them are like uh, Symmetric matrix. So these are vectors. These are all vectors. Okay. This is in R, this is in R, this is in R, this is in R. Yes. Uh, why are you obtaining this decay inverse? That's just the philosophy of that method. Eventually, we will write everything in terms of this particular update scheme. But the way you derive the update scheme is through approximating decay inverse rather than approximating decay. Okay. See, you, when you are deriving, like remember, somebody came up with this algorithm for the first time. So he has to come up with some idea upon which to come up with the algorithm. And then the algorithm gets simplified to some matrix manipulation. So they started with this starting point. These people started with this starting point and they came up with some algorithm and then eventually it got generalized to a class of algorithms known as quasi-Newton's method. Any other question? Yeah, I have a question, but it might not relate to what we have 
So if I have the conjugate direction method, yes, I know it works. Yes. So why do I need to use the Quasi-Newton method? Uh, very good question. So we'll study very soon. Uh, I mean, not I won't derive it, but it turns out that Quasi-Newton method is a very specific class of conjugate gradient method. So conjugate gradient method, so quasi-Newton's method for quadratic optimization problem is actually conjugate gradient, equivalent to conjugate gradient. So you know what generally happens is you come up with an algorithm, then people come up with a better algorithm, then people come up with even better algorithm, and so on and so forth. That's how the field progresses. So we started with steepest descent, which was known probably back in 1800s to do the optimization. Then we came up with Newton's method, which is also an algorithm that comes from long time back. And now we are generalizing all of those algorithms one by one. Okay. So least square is another algorithm, which is a generalization of steepest descent and Newton's method, but for a specific class of functions, which is a square. Like it has to be summation of gix square. Uh, then conjugate gradient was done for quadratic functions. Now we are dealing again with general functions. It's not a quadratic function anymore. Any other question? Uh, excuse me. Yes. Is there any connection between uh, Newton's method and the DFP method? Uh, so DFP is a specific subclass of quasi Newton's method. BFGS is a specific subclass of quasi Newton's method. And then we'll talk about what the general class of quasi Newton's method is. OK. OK. So let's try to see where we are going to have problems if we do just rank one update. <coughs> I'm going to erase the whole, whole stuff. No, actually, I probably want this side. OK, I'll collect uh, all of these expressions. Uh, in one place. So I have, I want dk plus 1 qk equals to pk. I'm going to define rk as pk minus dk qk. And I want my dk plus 1 equals to dk plus ak zk zk transpose. So the question is find ak and zk. So AK is an R. Goal, find AK in R, ZK in Rn, such that DK plus 1 is positive definite and satisfies this expression. That's what we want. I want dk plus 1 that satisfies that expression. How should we go about solving this uh, ak and zk problem? <coughs> Let's. Uh, Let's start with this expression, OK? So I'm going to substitute this into this. So I want, so step one is dk plus ak zk zk transpose times qk equals to pk. This gives me AK, ZK, <coughs> Z, 
this implies z k equals to r k over I think people will have some difficulty reading what I have written below. So I am going to write it here. So this gives me zk equals to 1 over ak Let me give it a name. This is my equation 2. This gives me equation 3. This is a scalar, this is a scalar, this is a vector. I want a vector. And so what we have found is zk has to be some scalar multiplied by rk. rk is something that I can already compute because it's just some matrix multiplication and uh, addition. So rk is something I can easily find out, but there is an unknown scalar and another unknown scalar. But at least zk we know is in the direction of rk multiplied by some scalar. So at least we have some th idea about where zk should be, which direction zk is supposed to point to. OK. Now I want to come up with a fourth thing. So if I do ak, zk, zk transpose, what do I get? I get rk rk transpose over ak zk transpose qk square which gives me the fourth equation any question so far Uh, where there is no zero anywhere. Uh, the first one, the multiplication three. The OK times the is This is AK. AK, AK, and AK. I'm only doing rank one update right now. I'm only trying to figure out what goes wrong in rank one update. Why did these people went to rank two update? There's no reason for us to believe that rank one update will not work, but rank two update will work. So I just want to show you where we are going to go wrong with rank one update. At least it tells you their thought process, like the day one, what exactly was going on in their head. So we're just going through that. By the way, these methods are from 1970s. So we are right now uh, thinking about what happened in early 1970s in somebody's head. I'm trying to figure out how you got the equation of four. Sorry? I'm trying to figure out how you got the equation of four. Uh, so I did, I, I got the zk. So I multiplied it by ak, and then I multiplied it by zk transpose. So I have to multiply this term by ak and then zk transpose, right? So I have the value of zk here, right? So I just, I'm just evaluating this expression. Okay, so I, have, I get the denominator square 
this ak there was an ak square but that get multiplied by this ak so i only have ak and then i have rk rk transpose from here okay so i want to simplify this term remember this term still contains zk and then ak so i need to figure out how to simplify it further uh, can someone come up with a way to simplify it further so that the denominator is something that I know? So here there are two unknowns right now, AK and ZK. I don't know both these things. So I need to figure out how to compute this. I'm trying to look at my notes and I'm reminding myself how exactly I got there. Okay, so I go back to this expression. Uh, okay, go back to this expression. Ah, okay, I know where I got this from. So from two, if I look at RK transpose QK, what do I get? I get AK, ZK transpose QK, ZK transpose QK. So I multiplied uh, QK transpose on both sides. Okay, on this side as well as on this side. Now, this is exactly this, and this is something I can compute because I know what RK is, I know what QK is. So I can compute this particular uh, value, <coughs> and that tells me I, I got the denominator of this, which is equal to RK transpose QK. So I get the rank one update. dk plus 1 equals to 1 over rk transpose qk rk rk transpose so i was able to find an ak and i was able to find a zk such that dk plus 1 satisfies this expression dk plus 1 qk equals to pk okay so we got a rank 1 update scheme what is the problem with this What is the problem with this particular expression? So I have a positive definite matrix here. I have a positive semi-definite matrix here. But actually, I don't quite know what this variable is going to be. It could be positive. It could be negative. If it is negative, if it is positive, then I don't have a problem. I know that dk plus 1 is a positive definite. If it is negative, then I don't quite know whether dk plus 1 is positive definite or negative definite, I mean, uh, has a negative eigenvalue. So unfortunately, I don't quite know what property dk plus 1 is going to satisfy. So maybe I start with an identity matrix or I start with some approximation of second derivative inverse. Uh, so d0 is positive definite. I added something which is a negative semi-definite matrix. Maybe D1 is also positive definite, maybe D2 is positive definite, but maybe D3 becomes, has an eigenvalue that is negative, or D4 may have an eigenvalue which is negative. So even though I get a sequence of symmetric matrices, I really don't know what the property of that symmetric matrix is. And that's why this particular rank one update scheme doesn't really work in general situation, because generally we cannot really prove whether DK plus one will be positive definite or not. And we really want dk plus 1 to be positive definite. So, so can't use this algorithm more generally. I can use it if I can prove that rk transpose qk is positive all the time. But actually, in 
in the generality at which we are trying to solve, we can't really prove it. Which is why uh, people in 1970s came up with rank 2 update where they could prove that dk plus 1 is actually positive definite under some assumptions. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, so this is a symmetric matrix and uh, uh, if you multiply a vector by itself, what you get is a positive semi-definite matrix. Uh, let's, let's see why. Uh, we actually covered it in, towards the end of the previous class. If you remember, if you go back to your notes, you will see it. Uh, I mean, that's the requirement for, new, for all gradient descent methods. Your D has to be positive definite. Okay. So let's look at uh, what is this rank 3 symmetric matrix part. So I'm going to erase this, this thing. And I'm going to define some vectors. So VK minus Okay, so I define two new vectors. Is this vector easy to compute? It's just matrix multiplication or matrices that I already know. Is this easy to compute? It's again matrix multiplication of things that I already know. So both of these are easy to compute. Uh, and dk plus one is equal to dk plus pk pk transpose over pk transpose qk Okay. So that's what we have here as a DFP and BFGS method.
So what do we have here? So we computed two. So this is a scalar. Uh, this is a vector, but I can compute this vector easily with all the information I already have. Then I can compute dk plus 1 using this expression. Rank 1 update, I don't know what the sign of this particular uh, vector is going to be, but most likely it's going to be non-negative. Uh, this is a positive vector, uh, sorry, positive value, tau k. So this is a, a negative semi-definite matrix because you have a negative sign here. And then here, this is something between 0 and 1. Tau k is a positive value, and vk, vk transpose is a positive semi-definite matrix. So you have a rank 1 matrix here, rank 1 matrix here, and a rank 1 matrix here. So you have three rank 1 matrices that are getting added, uh, which basically means you are getting a, a, a rank 3 update for this particular matrix. All of these are symmetric matrices. So you know that dk plus 1 is a symmetric matrix. So I started with a positive definite matrix. I added three symmetric matrices. I get a symmetric matrix, but I still don't know whether this is positive definite or not. Okay, because in order to prove it is positive definite, I need to make sure that it is symmetric and all eigenvalues are positive. So here is the. Excuse me, yes. so we are not sure if the rank 3 matrix is a semi positive matrix. That's right. We, we are not sure yet. Okay. But we'll see what, what the, the key contribution of DFP method and BFGS method is as follows the following result. If dk is positive definite, and alpha k is chosen such that So in particular, if you use line minimization rule for picking alpha k, then this condition will be satisfied, in which case dk plus 1 is going to be positive definite. Okay? That's exactly the part which we were not able to prove here. Under what conditions dk plus 1 is going to be positive definite, we don't know. But for this particular update, if this condition is satisfied, then we know that dk plus 1 is going to be positive definite. Uh, so this is basically dk, qk is a vector, and this is vector, vector transpose. So remember, dk transpose is the same as dk. Yeah, it's a symmetric matrix, it's a positive definite matrix. So this is what uh, the key contribution of quasi-Newton's method is. You can pick, if you pick ck to be equal to 0, you get the DFP method. If you pick CK to be equal to 1, you get the BFGS method. It turns out that when CK is equal to 1, you don't have a rank 3 matrix. You actually have a rank 2 matrix. So there will be a lot of cancellations. If you put CK equals to 1, substitute all these vectors, what you get is a rank 2 update. And that's also uh, that gives you the BFGS method. BFGS method is uh, shown to be superior in all application type problems. Uh, but, you know, depending on your problem, you can pick CK somewhere between 0 and 1. If uh, CK equals to 1 is not giving you a good solution, then you can pick CK to be something lower than 1. And that's your uh, quasi-Newton's method. So everything in this uh, matrix can be computed uh, easily because it's all matrix multiplication. And under this condition, if alpha K is picked according to minimization rule, then dk plus 1 is known to be positive definite matrix. So, so that's what covers you in this method. <clears throat> Any questions so far?
How did they get this particular expression? It requires a lot of matrix uh, algebra to get here. It's a very fascinating uh, 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 theory and uh, it's given in some book and if you're interested in figuring out what the derivation of this method is, it's given in some other book, so I'll, I'll send it to you if you need it. But uh, it requires a lot of effort. It, there's a lot of matrix algebra that goes into figuring out this method and then proving this result. We are not covering that in the class. Okay. Any question so far? Do you have a question? Uh, I'm not clear how we will choose alpha k because don't we have to take gradient over here and search by that condition? No, if you pick, so again, uh, if you pick alpha k according to line minimization rule, this condition will automatically be satisfied. Yeah, yeah. Any other question? Okay, another fact, if dk, if uh, fx is half x transpose qx minus b transpose x, Alpha k is picked according to line minimization rule, which we have discussed earlier. Then d1 to dn are q conjugate vectors. And uh, the second part is dn is Q inverse. Okay, so this is becomes uh, equivalent to the conjugate gradient method that we talked about, conjugate direction method that we talked about in the previous class. And uh, in fact, you get you recover the Q inverse as uh, D N capital D N. Again, the proof of these results are very long. Uh, so I'm not going to cover it, but that's a fact that we know from, from the book. Question, yeah. One concern I have about this class is uh -huh. I can't reproduce this. Right. The results? No, like no. these derivations, like, right? I uh -huh. can't reproduce it. I have to look at my notes, right. that kind of stuff. So it kind of gets me what Cannot solve means what? No, what I'm saying is these are all just algorithms. Correct, which correct. Which I cannot reproduce myself. You will have to do it because it's part of assignment two. <laughs> 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 so uh, you will be implementing, I mean, maybe not this algorithm. I'm not going to give you this algorithm to implement, but all the other algorithms you will be implementing in assignment two, in MATLAB or Python or whatever your okay, favorite okay. language yeah, is. Yeah, so I have to force you to do it. You won't learn it otherwise. In MATLAB or Python, that's fine, but manually, no. Manually, I mean, nobody is going to ask you to do it manually okay, okay, anyways, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, <laughs> this N is 100, okay? So the MATLAB questions that I'll give you, N will be 50 or 100. So there's no way you can do it manually. Okay, okay. So. I'll have to force you to write yeah. the code that works. Yeah. No, fine. Yeah. I think the conjugate direction method uh, will be like a thousand dimensional problem. So, you know, you will have to make sure that you can, you can still solve it by hand, but I'll ask you to do like, figure out how much time it takes by doing the matrix inversion, multiplying it by the matrix, and how much time it takes to do through conjugate gradient method. And you will see the difference right there during the implementation. Any other question? Okay, so that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, there aren't too many questions in the class. so. Uh, in the next class, which is uh, Monday onwards, uh, we'll talk about uh, 
uh, optimization over convex sets. And uh, after that, during the optimization over convex set, I'll also come back to this uh, unconstrained optimization problem at some point of time. And we'll talk about momentum methods and some other methods also. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how much we can do in the next class, how much we can do optimization over convex sets versus other algorithms for solving uh, uh, unconstrained optimization problems. So, uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, we'll meet again on Monday.